Hey guys, today we're driving the all new 2021 Ford F-150 Limited. We had an XLT about a month ago that we filmed on this channel and it was nice, but it didn't have all the features that the new 2021 F-150 does. This one, however, has got it all. So we have the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6. It makes 400 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque. This is the Super Crew. It has the short bed. We've got a lot of interior luxuries and amenities and just cool little features that they've packed into this new 21 F-150. This is a $74,000 truck. And uh, this one is actually spec to just under 80 grand. So it's not cheap, but you do get a lot for your money. And uh, these top trims are a little bit more expensive than they used to be on the previous 2020 model F-150s. Let's start in the back, because there's just a lot to cover with this thing. There are so many features. We're not going to hit them all, but we'll get as much as we can, and then we'll take this thing for a drive. You've got a power-operated tailgate, power-operated up and down. The new rulers, pencil holders, tool holders, a uh, place for your C-clamps. You guys have heard about all this stuff. Of course, there's still the step and uh, railing to hold on to. you got a nice bed liner back here, and, of course, your pro power on board down there with a couple of plug outlets. The hybrid actually has a 240 outlet, which is pretty cool. You can turn this on and uh, operate it. Fortunately, this F-150 we have this week has a ground fault, so that system hasn't been working for us, but uh, hopefully we can get another one and test it out. And Charlie wanted to charge his Tesla Model Y with it, but uh, it didn't really happen. As you can see, power up, very nice. This F-150 is rated to tow 11,300 pounds. It's four wheel drive. It has selectable four low, four high, and four auto. And of course, you get these running boards that open as you approach the vehicle. On the inside, we have a very nice and luxurious interior. This actually reminds me a little bit of what Lincoln is doing these days with a lot of their surfacing and materials and touch points. And look at these seats. Kind of looks familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. So of course we've got this cool little foldable shifter. <laughs> and of course that does that so that you can turn this into a table. You can eat your burger, you can do your math, whatever. You've got a nice flat surface here to work on. Kind of a cool feature. Lots of storage space everywhere, cup holders, places to put writing utensils. You've got your wireless charging and phone holders right there with your USB-A and Type-C ports. There's also a little place here to put your phone, but it's not as nice of an integration as what RAM has. Still, I think it'll do the job. Lots of buttons and knobs for climate control. Well done, Ford. You can change all of your drive modes down here. And you get a cool little animation with each one showing you where and what it does. And uh, sport mode will even change you into four wheel drive auto, which is kind of cool. We're just going to leave it in normal mode today, I think, for the most part. So you've got this fully digital gauge cluster right here. You can see your fuel economy, so many different menus and information displays. Um, you can really kind of go deep in here and and get lost in information, but um, there's lots of settings, etc. You, you guys get the idea. We have great visibility from this lower door. Cool looking mirror design, actually kind of practical in real life. Uh, it allows you to see what's behind you without really showing you too much of the truck. It kind of bends around the truck's body, which I think is kind of cool. Your blind spot monitoring is right here. We've got a very nice Alcantara suede-like headliner. And of course, tons of speakers from this Bang & Olufsen sound system, which we will test later on in this video. There are even speakers right here in the headrest. Super comfortable seats. Of course, these recline completely flat to make for like a bed if you need to sleep in your F-150. And um, I don't know if this is real carbon fiber or fake carbon fiber, but it actually it looks pretty real and uh, it feels pretty nice. The materials in here are pretty much top-notch. They feel pretty good in uh, comparison to everything else that Ford has been doing. Maybe not as nice as Lincoln's materials, but again, this isn't a Lincoln. This is a Ford F-150. So for the price, you're getting a lot of usability. Maybe not as not nice luxury 
as Lincoln offers, but it's pretty darn close. Let's show you guys under the hood here, this EcoBoost V6. There it is. We no longer have the high output 450 horsepower EcoBoost available for the 21 model year. Uh, I don't know if Ford will bring that back, but I assume that's only reserved for the Raptor now. The design on this is shockingly similar to the 2020 outgoing model. Uh, they really haven't made many changes here. It looks very similar, and uh, I think most people would be hard pressed to really see much of a difference. I think that's kind of a good thing because the old truck looked fantastic in my opinion, uh, but also if you want something that's a little bit you know, more exciting and newer looking and you really want to impress the neighbors with your new F-150, they may not know that this is the new F-150. A little bit of storage underneath the seats, nice place to put a bike or anything. Lots of places to put more things here. I mean, this is a truck. There's so much storage, it's insane. A couple USB ports, a plug outlet, heated seats, another car charger outlet. I mean, you just look at this interior and there's a lot going on here. There's so many features inside and out. The Super Crew is very spacious on the inside. And of course, you've got this massive panoramic sunroof that shows you just about everything. These running boards actually have a physical button that you can manually fold them up. Of course, you want to kick that with your foot, but just to show you guys that it's a button, not a sensor, that's kind of cool. Sometimes those sensors just don't work. Down here, you've got the ability to raise and lower your foot pedals which is very nice, especially for taller, shorter drivers trying to get that perfect driving position. And the infotainment. I'm actually quite impressed with the responsiveness of this new screen. It actually looks really good. Of course, you've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. That's also available as a wireless system too. Uh, but it's responsive, it's sharp, it's quick to react. You've got all sorts of features in here like your Pro Power on board, your power running board, driver's assistance, zone lighting. If you're uh, in the dark and you want to illuminate you know a camping spot or something everything outside the vehicle and of course you've got the secondary screen right here that shows a bunch of different menus and options yeah all good stuff all right let's take this thing for a drive and see what it's like on the road nice reverse cameras good 360 cam for how big this truck is you definitely find yourself using these cameras quite a bit in parking scenarios. So we'll just start off in normal drive mode here. This has a 10 speed automatic transmission. We've got a pretty smooth powertrain between this EcoBoost 3.5 liter V6 and the 10 speed. Had a few rough shifts in this this week, but for the most part, it's been pretty good. Not the best fuel economy, but for a fuel full fuel economy test, check out Charlie's video on the daily motor. I'll give you guys some real world numbers. The ride is a little bit stiff, but then again, this has to tow a lot of weight and it is a truck. And it's also 15 degrees outside and I'm sure the shock fluid's a little bit more, uh, a little bit thicker than normal. The XLT F-150 with a 270 EcoBoost was a lot more comfy and the ride quality on that was a lot smoother. Uh, this Limited though seems to be a tad stiffer. However though, these seats are very comfortable. I haven't had any trouble finding a nice, relaxing, comfortable driving position. They're a little bit on the stiff side, but generally, that's not a bad thing. Driving position is good. I have excellent visibility in this truck. Again, like I said, with these, this lower door frame here and uh, the mirrors, I can see around me very well. The brake pedal feels a little bit, I mean, it feels like a truck's brake pedal. There's really no feel. It's kind of a, a strange sensation coming to a stop, but braking power is quite good. And, uh, it has a nice amount of bite. 
this F-150 is fast. So 4 horsepower goes a long way when you've got a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6. Let's put us into, uh, let's go into sport mode just for fun. See what happens. Or maybe, maybe we'll just do tow haul mode and then we'll engage that four wheel drive system. It handles like a truck, but it goes like stink. It's pretty fast. Of course with tow haul, keep the RPMs up a little bit higher. This 10 speed does a pretty nice job holding gears, letting you ride out that torque. There's so many drive modes, I don't really know which one to pick. And I think it sounds good too. A little bit of piped in noise there, but for the most part, it's pretty calm, pretty smooth, pretty understated. And of course, this new F-150 is a mild hybrid, so stop-start is very seamless. Got a pretty bumpy section of road here. Let's test out the NVH. We've got a few little creaks and rattles throughout this cabin. But that could also be the cold. All sorts of funky noises pop up in cold weather. put us into sport mode around this corner here, see how it does. We're going to shift into 4x4 auto. On these 22 inch wheels we actually get a pretty, pretty confidence inspiring cornering limit there. Feels pretty good, 55 miles an hour around that entrance ramp. Oh yeah, like I said, this thing is quick. It pulls. No paddle shifters, but you can put this into a manual gear selection mode and use the little plus minus button on the gear selector. Yeah, this 10 speed does shift pretty quickly. Guys, let's go in and let's test this Bang & Olufsen sound system. We've got our new test tracks here. See what they sound like.
Sound system is pretty good in this. I'm impressed. You really get a full, rich, nice surround sound experience. Let's talk about the radar cruise and some of the driver assist systems here. So we've got a very nice button layout, very easy to use, very ergonomically friendly. You can quickly change your following distance right here and your lane keeping system is very easy to engage. You can skip five mile an hour increments by pressing and holding the up or down switch. And it seems to do a pretty good job of keeping in its lane. However, it's always prompting me to keep my hands on the steering wheel. And even when I have my hands on the steering wheel, you have to pretty violently jerk it or squeeze it or move it around. And uh, then it'll stop prompting you. So in my experience this week, the lane keeping system has been pretty much unusable just because even though I have my hands on the wheel, it's always prompting me to keep them there and it's just distracting, it's interrupting the, the driving experience, and it just doesn't really sense that I'm already in control well enough. Otherwise though, the systems in here work really well. The radar cruise blends speed differentials really well. When someone pulls out in front of you, it does a really nice job slowing down. Uh, it's a very good system. Ford is always calibrated. The radar guide cruise system is very nicely. Just the lane keep assist is a little bit annoying to work with just because it doesn't quite work with you as well as it would, you would like it to. On the highway, we have a pretty nice level of comfort and NVH. There's not a lot of wind noise, not a lot of tire noise. These general tires, uh, though they look a little bit cheap, are very comfortable and uh, seem to not transmit a lot of road noise either, which is great. The heated steering wheel on this F-150 is perfect. It's not too hot. It's just nice, nice enough for bare hands. Same with the heated and cooled seats. I love how they've kept buttons and knobs that are so user-friendly with this F-150. It's all a little bit of a long reach, but uh, you know, that's always been the case. I always feel like at five foot 10, I'm a slightly small driver in some of these larger truck cabins. truck is super stable at highway speeds very smooth very comfy the ride does smooth out the faster you go and of course really it's designed to be towing a pretty heavy load so how can we sum up this new f-150 limited well this is a very nice overall truck ford's done a really good job integrating some cool innovative new features here i do still think though that this does play second fiddle to the ram uh, I would go Ram, F-150, Silverado in my ranking. The Ram is just that much more refined. It has a slightly nicer driving experience. And this F-150, I think, could ride a little bit better. And it could smooth out some of the drivetrain hiccups that show up occasionally. The rest of this truck, though, driving experience aside, is awesome. There's just so much cool, innovative stuff here that they've added for this 21 model year, which I think will be very useful to some people. You have to pay to get it. It's expensive. These higher trim models have gotten pricier this year and the lower trim models have gotten a little bit cheaper. So it kind of depends on what you need. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the new F-150. Thanks for watching. It's been good to get into a higher trim uh, than the XLT we tested about a month ago. Uh, stay tuned on Winding Road Magazine's YouTube channel and on the Daily Motor YouTube channel for more videos on this truck and more thoughts and opinions from Charlie. So. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. And of course, with the remote, you've got automatic starting remote start. You can lower and raise the tailgate. All sorts of cool features.